Greetings, YouTube. This is a master class level backpacking itinerary workflow. And we've come a long way from where we started in version one, which was looking at our trail, which in this case is the John Muir Trail, which is around 230 miles, and then proportioning it out by day for an itinerary, and then breaking it down if we, you know, slowly increased our miles per day. So that's where we started, and that's, that is a good starting point. And in version three, we've done, we've improved this so much because we've taken into account two other parameters that take quite a bit of work to um, get nailed down and are very important for the process. So you, if you have the time, uh, I would highly recommend you do this. I'll link this spreadsheet in the description below and you can click on file make a copy if you want to make a copy for yourself and uh, use this as a template so the key difference between this version and the last one is that we have our elevation gains and losses for each day of our proposed itinerary and as I did this the nine day trip became an eight day trip and that's okay I still think it's doable and if it takes nine days that's all right too so this is just the outline for the planned itinerary and if for some reason it needed to change on trail that would be okay it's just a really good starting point so let's talk through the software we used to create this itinerary and if you happen to be doing the John Muir Trail feel free to use my maps here so we have them linked in Guide GPS, and what I did was I created a path in Gaia GPS that gives me the elevation profile. And then I could see my ascent, total ascent for the day, for the first day, or if we were hiking the other way. Um, it'd be the last day, my max elevation, my min elevation, and my descent. So I went ahead and did this for each day of the trip. I'm going to show a workflow here real quick for popping this into Google Earth for even another visualization. So we can go export KML, that's the Google Earth profile. We'll pop over into Google Earth. Looks like it was minimized. All right, so in Google Earth, we will do Command O on Mac. Pop open this KML we just created. And now we can look at it in a nice Google Earth style view. So we can see the route from the backpacking camp all the way to Lyle Canyon. We should be able to click on this route and show our elevation profile as well. And in Google Earth, you get max slope and mid slope, which is kind of cool. So this first day has us going right up into Lyle Canyon, which is, there's a boundary here. We'll show it in Gaia GPS. So if we do the Nat Geo Trails Illustrated layer, and if you buy the Yosemite Park map, it will show this too, you have this purple line here. And there's no camping in Lyle Canyon. And it it's basically, you know, there's about a few mile bubble from Tuolumne Meadows that there's no camping allowed. And see, so that's where this first campsite ends. Anyway, focusing on this going back to this itinerary creation, Gaia GPS is where we 
obtain these key parameters and, and linked our maps. The other thing I did was I saved this for offline access by going to file uh, and then clicking here, say, make available offline. And then I can have the spreadsheet available on my cell phone on trail. So that's really important as well. Okay, so let's get into the numbers. And then if you're into kilometers instead of feet and miles, metric system, you got your spreadsheet here. So you can open up the spreadsheet and click into the tabs and just pick which uh, units you want to use. All right, so we can see here that first day is around 30 miles, 28 for the second one. Biggest day is 30.8. However, miles aren't everything, right? And that's where this conditional formatting comes in handy. In general, the green represents smaller elevation gain days in terms of your gains and the red is higher elevation gain days. So if we're looking at any given day on trail for elevation gain, darker color means harder day. And so we can consider these uh, parameters in our in our planning process for the visualization of the trip. So if we have day one gains of close to 9,000 feet and then miles of 29, we know that's going to be a pretty big day. And we can project the amount of time on trail here. And we also did a daylight length hours calculation here of not hiking, so that's kind of cool. Side note, I always bring a headlight even in the summer because you never know when you're going to use it, and oftentimes I'll hike earlier in the morning to avoid the afternoon heat and try and do around um, 10 miles uh, as early as possible, ideally 10 before 10. So here we go. That's day one. Day two, a little easier. We can see the gains aren't quite as bad, but the miles are just as long, so that will be an easier day, right? Day four, longest day of the trip in terms of miles, but the gains are kind of in the middle. Day five, easiest day of the trip. And let's, for funsies, switch over to metric for the last few days of the trip, just to give our metric friends some love and compassion. So day five, we have 1,710 meters of gains not too worried about the losses like they are something to consider when you're trail running um, and what I find with ultralight backpacking and like fast walking it's not as big of a deal for me on my body uh, nonetheless the data is there in case it's just to have as part of the equation okay total kilometers on this day 46 time hiking just under 10 hours day six we have 2,000 meters of gains is kind of right in the middle with 44.25 kilometers and I just realized we can we can clean this up a little bit here we don't need kilometers that's too, too specific. Okay, day seven. Uh, easier day in terms of miles, but harder, pretty hard day in terms of gains. And then same with day eight. It's a moderate mile day, or sorry, moderate kilometer day, and medium day in terms of gains. Okay, down to this last uh, area here, we have our totals for the trip in meters, so 17,000 meters, 349 kilometers, total time hiking 72 and a half hours at this 4.38 kilometers per hour, which is about 3 miles per hour. 
and then we can go to our totals here. So minimum, or and, and this is just your basic like high school level statistics, but it's really helpful for just seeing the range of the trip and looking at it from uh, a new view. So minimum miles, or sorry, minimum gains, 4,813 feet. Man, <laughs> that is a big minimum. So this is definitely a uh, crest trail and a big mountain range when that's your minimum. Average per day, 7,001. Median most common number in our data set is 7,323. Maximum is uh, just under 9,000 feet. Take a look at this on the metric side of things. Minimum. 1,467 meters, average 2,134 meters, median 2,232 meters, maximum, whew, <laughs> that's big, 2,729 meters. And as we look at our miles, lowest mile day is 35 kilometers, that's no joke. Biggest mile day, just under 50 kilometers, that's gonna be a big, big day. And then we got our average and medians here. So that's it. That's the nuts and bolts of things. Again, the key thing that makes this a mastery level spreadsheet for trip planning purposes is we have so many more important parameters from building our map in Gaia GPS. I'll put a link to this software in the description below. There is a yearly subscription fee, and uh, you can download the maps from Gaia GPS onto your phone, so they're available offline. Always, always put your phone in airplane mode the day before your trip, and make sure your maps have downloaded correctly on your phone, and take paper maps uh, so that you have a backup option. So that's my Gaia GPS tangent. All right. So... Concluding this video, what are my thoughts? Spreadsheets are a really important tool for mapping out a good, clean itinerary for a trip, even if it's months in advance. And it can be a lot of fun, too, to visualize this stuff. You can also use mapping software, to, and it's, it's pretty important to use mapping software to get the most accurate representation you can from not just your miles per day breakdown, but your gains and losses. Daylight hours, that can be easily found by uh, looking things up on the internet. And uh, these statistics right here are just your, you know, basic for um, spreadsheet formulas, but they also tell a good picture and let you think about as a hiker, hey, is this itinerary realistic? For me, this is a pushing my boundaries itinerary. I don't know if I can do this, but I, I think it's within my range and I want to give it a good shot. In any case, that's all I have for you today. We'll see you around.